Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be going over some Ableton tips for beginners. These are for the people that have kind of committed to Ableton. Um, you have tied the knot, so to speak, and you want to move forward and you want to do these tiny little optimizations to make your life easier. Um, this isn't for someone just starting, starting out when you first open it. I have a video for that, uh, Ableton Live for the complete beginner. But once you've kind of done that and you've experimented a bit, uh, this video is for you. So the first one, first tip is to make a default set. This is my default set. It has a click track, which I find quite useful. It has a group of uh, all my inputs for recording. And then I have uh, MIDI out to my virus behind me. Um, just so opposite ends of the studio can communicate. Uh, this changes all the time, and I'll just make a new uh, default set. So yeah, let's kind of make one together. I'll just delete all that, insert audio track. Okay, so this is basically what you're gonna start out with, which brings me to my second tip. You're gonna want a limiter on the master channel, just so you don't you know, overload things and get like clipping or something like that. Who knows what your setup is? Always a good idea. You don't even have to use the Pro L. You can use the Ableton one. Just drop a limiter in there. And what I want you to do is, you know, your your default output is at zero. Now you can bring that down to negative one dB. I like to go negative three just to give myself a bit of headroom just in case. I don't know. This is how I do it, and it works quite well. So you're gonna want to. Uh, Basically, put in an audio track and a MIDI track because you're going to be working with audio and MIDI. When I was kind of starting out and learning, I found myself using the same uh, two effects on each track, and I still do. And what I use is a compressor, which is right here. I'll just drag that into the audio one and then the EQ soon after. And I would use these all the time. So what this is, is compressor is dynamics control, and the EQ is frequency control. So when you drop things in, you're gonna wanna, you know, compress and EQ and whatnot. So it's best to always have those there. Another tip is to right click on EQ8 and make sure oversampling is selected. So click on that, so there's a little check mark there, and then save as default preset. Uh, yes, save that. So every time you drop in an EQ8, it's oversampled. Oversampling means that you have the absolute highest quality. It's two, sim two times oversampling. So there's no like Nyquist limit uh, aliasing in the higher frequencies. And uh, it's in modern machines, it's not that much of a CPU hit. Always good to have. Uh, while we're at it, if you're using the glue compressor a lot, right click and make sure oversampling is selected as well. So yeah, there's that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the compressor, hold shift, select this, and then uh, control C to copy. And I'm going to right click down here or hit control V to paste in my MIDI uh, program here. So that brings me to shortcuts. So Ableton has, you know, cut, uh, copy and paste. Copy is control C and uh, paste is control V. Uh, but Control D is just as useful. You're gonna wanna, you're going to want to uh, uh, deploy or employ uh, Control D a lot. It's you know the the shortcut that I use the most. It just makes things easier instead of manually copy and pasting entire things. You can just do 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 do. So yeah, we're gonna Control D this audio track. So we have two audio tracks with uh, compressor and, and EQ. Uh, with MIDI, Control D, so we have uh, that and that. And what you can do is go to Preferences and go to File Folder. Oh, yeah, File Folder, Save, Current Set as Default. You hit Save, and then there you go. This will open every time, so you can just kind of explore. So I've gone over that. So let's continue with the shortcuts. I'm going to jump around here. I'm going to. Just search for samples. I'll just look up kick in here. All right, so you got a kick. I'm gonna drop that into my audio. And we have a kick here, which is pretty neat. I'll bring the, the BPM up to like 125 or something. Turn this up. So here's, here's an important tip. 
So say you drop in a sample here, it's a kick. Notice that it sounds different, right? What's happening is, is Ableton automatically fades in audio so you don't get uh, clicks and pops. So you right click and you go show fades. And uh, you can see the fades here. It's just volume automation, really. What you're going to want to do is just move that over. And you'll notice that the, the part of the kick, what's well, called the transient part of the kick, kind of pops through. So the kick makes kind of sense now. It's not muffled, like that's not cut off, which is a common problem. Um, so yeah, let's make a little kick loop here. So I'm going to make sure that, just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to select this area, right, all the way to where the, first, the, the next kick is going to be. I'm just going to hit Control and hit D. And I can keep on pressing it, and then I got my kick loop here. Right, that's all well and good. You can do some cool stuff with that. Another tip is is to consolidate, because if you have an entire track with this kick, like going all the way through, uh, that eats up uh, files the the Ableton Live file size. And uh, I used to do this, and I would run out of RAM. So what you can do is once you have, let's go clap and stuff like that. Okay, that's good enough. Put a clap there. Right, control D, move that over. Pretty neat, I'll bring that down. What you can do is you can select this area, right click at the top blue part, the clip color, and you can go consolidate. Boom, and that consolidates all that into one piece of audio. So it won't, you know, it, it'll just free up memory. I'm not sure how it works. Or like, how to really describe the benefit it's just it doesn't eat up ram i don't know why it happens it used to happen a lot in eight it might not happen in nine but this is just a force of habit so from here what you can do is you can uh control d to make it longer so you start from your your one bar loop then you have like you know this much you can select and then move that over alternatively to free up even more uh ram and file size and you know give Ableton a little bit of a break, is you can select the clip here. We have two clips selected, we can hit loop. And then we can drag that over there. So it's essentially one audio file. And it just makes things easier to, to grab and stuff like that. Okay, so let's, let's find something else here. So let's go to... And the, the loop is uh, very useful. When you're doing certain things, I'll go just to instruments. We'll just drop in an analog into our MIDI thing here. I'll still select the one bar loop, right click on that area, insert MIDI clip, and then loop that and then move that over. So where that is useful is I can insert a note. It'll insert a note all throughout, which is pretty neat, right? And you can do all sorts of stuff. Wow. That's pretty high up there. Let's fix that. What we can do is we can select all those notes, hold shift and press down. And it'll go down a full octave. We'll go down more and more. Pretty, uh, pretty cool if you ask me. Um, also, what you can do is say if you want to only use these notes, you can hit fold and it'll avoid, it'll avoid all confusion and you can just do cool stuff like that. All right, let's move on to filters. Let's drop a filter in here. Automatically it gets dropped in. Let's move it over here. So it's pre-dynamics. So let's uh, drop in some automation. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go back to my one bar loop here. And I can do some cool automation-y stuff with a filter. So say if I want to copy this over, uh, I can, you know, do that. Uh, just select and control D. But there's another way to do it where you kind of, uh, let's say, yeah, you can, you can do that so you can kind of select 
this whole part here, and you can hit Control Alt D, and it just copies over the automation. So con Control Alt D is also uh, very useful, and uh, you can do stuff like that. <laughs> Right? All sorts of stuff there. So Control D and Control L D will uh, duplicate things. Say if you want to move things around and you don't want to move the automation. Say if you want to like, I don't know, do something. What you can do is you can hit this little lock here. And this will basically detach the automation from the clip, which is exceptionally useful. You can actually move things over. So you want to offset something and still maintain the same automation, you're golden. Right, that's all good as well. I went over transpose keyboard. Yeah, that's uh that's basically basically it. Um in regards to automation, what you can do is if you want to keep this automation visible at all times, so say if you select the the volume it'll disappear and you're like, okay, I gotta go back to the, the frequency here. Click on that to have it visible. What you can do is you can hit this little plus symbol, boom. And then that is always there. And you can have all your lanes so that you can see like the relationship and the continuity between the automation you have. And that's uh, all well and groovy. So from there, yeah, say if we wanna take this kick out of the end here and then double the clap, we can do that. And uh, yeah, select that, duplicate. And uh, yeah, it just keeps things organized. You won't get confused in the structure of your track. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, yeah, I basically went over everything. So those are like, you know, some Ableton tips. I'm sure you can, you can, you know, think of adding more, but I just kind of wanted to just leave it to the, I guess, important ones. Anyway. Hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.